Welcome to the Drupal 8 in, on the cover initiative session. Um, this is a talk about how Drupal 8 has changed in the past few years now. Um, besides all the official initiatives you've heard of. So my aim is to um, maybe you may see something that you know already, but you, maybe something you don't. So uh, my goal is to put light on all those initiatives that or all those um, changes that haven't been um, so um, publicized uh, besides the official initiatives. So before we start, I have um, a couple of disclaimers. The first one is that you, what you see here, what you're going to see here, um, may or not be, be true. It's not I'm a liar or anything. Is that, I mean, I've been running this session for a year or so now, and I was looking to the initial set of slides, and I probably changed all those twice or three times. So the things that um, I'm presenting are there, but it's not guaranteed that may changes or some things may may not happen eventually um, second is that um, I'm showing code so if you don't see it uh, properly from the back I mean it's a pretty small room I guess I guess you will but if you don't see it the slides are already there in bit.ly slash d8 undercover so if you want to check those um, go ahead so about me, I work in a company called Imbra. Uh, we're based in Barcelona and London. I'm in Picambra, <coughs> all over. And I happen to be the track chair of the code run development uh, track for, for this con and the new small PHP one. So if you have any feedback about those, I mean, this is a random disclaimer, but if you have any feedback about those, um, just find me and I'll be happy to, to answer any comments. So let's get started. First of all, um, I want to talk about what the Drupal 8 initiatives are um, and how they are um, relevant. Well, I have two screens here. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is a new way to develop Drupal 8. We didn't have that in Drupal 7. Um, so it sets a very specific um, goal or very specific objective for the, for the leaders of those initiatives that are appointed. And... Um, it uh, improves the focus of the volunteers working on, on those initiatives. So whereas you may not have a clear idea what to work on, um, they do, and you can look up and ask them what their goals are, and they have the authority to, to make decisions. So these, if you're not familiar with the initiatives, they are, these are the initiatives, like we have the web services one, the abusing core, the CMI, uh, the mobile one. Um, so these are the official one. These these guys had a goal, and moved Drupal 8 to to that goal. Um, but um, a ton of things happen um, outside these initiatives. So I see Drupal 8, like you get a new car, you open the hood, and then you get a big snake there. Um, you probably didn't know about it, but you probably want to do something, because, unless you really like big snakes. Um, so this is like the graphic vision of this, of this talk. Uh, there are really big things changing, and you should be aware of that. Now, I'm starting with a couple of things that you probably heard tons about it. Um, first one is that we have a new WizWeek AIM core. Um, you did hear about this one, right? Yeah? Okay. Um, so we've been complaining for, I don't know, six years in Drupal uh, that we don't have a WYSIWYG editor once we install. That's a, like the main conversation that you used to hear. And as soon as it happened, well, uh, the first thing we did is complain because it, maybe it was too much WYSIWYG around. <laughs> Another thing that happened was tweak. Um, if you haven't heard about it, there's a great session about it. I don't know where it, when it is, but uh, you should look into it. Um, so we had this in Drupal 7. This is how we <coughs> render a block with PHP template, right? So there's a lot of um, 
PHP here and there and then print. And, uh, this is not really safe for uh, handing over. And you probably, uh, how many of you have considered yourself developers? OK, well, um, there is, is, is there any themer in the room? <laughs> well, maybe this is not really safe to hand on someone that, that implements the design. Um, there is a lot of uh, security issues and things like that. This is the same file with Twig. You know, you have a nice output here. There is no PHP. Everything is sanitized. So it is a great addition. <coughs> there is a new autoloader. Um, you have um, probably heard about the PSR thing. Um, and before you ask, it stands for proposal for a standard request. You probably forget this after the talk. And, and this is not a code thing. It's just a standard. So it marks how the file should be organized. So Drupal 8 started with PSR 0, which means that you put uh, the right file in the right directory, and it will just load. It will auto-load for you. So that means no more um, requires or model includes or um, files array or uh, hook menus with path and file and everything. You don't need that because you put the file in the right place and it will just load. And the PSR4 simplifies the folder structure. And um, this is great for a really important reason that when you download a model or when you get a piece of code, if you want to know where the menu are, menus are implemented or the forms or where the entity definitions are, with this, you just know. You just go to uh, the folder that should have them. And all the models should be implementing this. Otherwise, I would consider that broken. I mean, um, as opposed as getting a um, hook menu that defines the um, admin page in an admin ink file or just in the model or just in a folder called admin or just, you know. So you have a very, very good uh, structure and you know what to expect. Um, there are some things that have been gone from Drupal 8 core. So no, don't, don't bother looking to, for them then, there. So it's been strong. And, Core is smaller in a way. Um, one thing is gone, and <coughs> I'm very happy about it, and you should too, <laughs> is the PHP filter is gone. Uh, I feel safer already. I mean, if you get handed a, I mean, a project, um, you get handed a project, um, the PHP filter could be enabled anywhere waiting just to hand you, because, you know, it's as simple as that. And it has a security and performance issues. So if you put a PHP filter, PHP code with PHP filter in a node, uh, that invalidates cache. So that's not very good. And um, it solved a very specific use case in the past, but I don't think we have that anymore. So it was useful in the past, but, you know, but, if you're willing to take the risk that you don't, honestly, <laughs> there are some country models that enable the PHP filter for those that like uh, risky spots. <coughs> oh, you have, um, when you get the slides, you have like links with uh, the history there and how the things happen. Maybe useful. So, uh, oh, sorry. These are gone as well. So we don't have the profile model. We don't have block anymore. Uh, we don't have trigger because honestly, how many of you did actually use the trigger model of core? Okay, one. <laughs> there was a shy hand in the back. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, dashboard is gone. Um, open ID. You know how hard it is to put a blink nowadays in, a, <laughs> in HTML? Um, overlay is gone. Fall is gone. And no garland anymore. And that maybe be a sad panda thing, but we have Bartik now. 
And the, all of these are, um, it's not that they just wipe out the code, it's uh, the, all of them are in uh, country models now. It's just they are not in Drupal core. Okay, so this is a quote from the issue queues. It says, disabled models are broken beyond repair. I'm just being literal, that's what it says. And this is something that, I mean, a very graphical image just came to my mind when I read this. I mean, want to share it with you. It's this. So, you know, you have something that was great at the beginning, then got a little less great, and then, you know, over time, then someone came and tried to fix it. <laughs> it was not really possible, you know. It's not that it was a, a matter of skills. It was really, really impossible to do. So um, no more model disabled for us. And this is a very controversial part of my presentation normally uh, because people say, well, I use model disabled. I think it's useful. Um, I'm not reflecting my, my opinions. I'm just telling that. It, it has happened. So, basically, in a nutshell, uh, disable a model means disabling how it behaves with other things, say the user, say uh, other models, say uh, the database. So, say you disable a model and you leave it li like that for a while, and your site evolves. When you go to enable that model again, you may have a data integrity risk because all that data got stale in a table for a while and then you don't really know if that's going to work. In Drupal 5 and Drupal 6, you know when building websites seem, seem simpler, um, this worked very well. But in Drupal 7 we already started to notice that this wasn't a very good uh, uh, future plan. So everything that um, look like a disabled um, action for models is gone. So now a model is either installed or uninstalled. So if you have a model and you enable it, install it for the first time, for getting rid of that you need to actually completely uninstall it. Um, and thanks to the slide we, say, uh, we saw before about PSR4, uh, there is a new autoloader. So if a model is installed, it's, in, it's installed, uh, the autoloader will look for the files and will load the files of the, that model. That makes disabling it really, really difficult because it will be a very uh, big overhead on the autoloader. And um, they might be a model for this. It's just, I mean, the, they just reserve the namespace. And let's see if someone figures out how to do it but not in core. Um, normally the use case you have for disable a model is like uh, I'm doing a migration and I want to just disable this thing to see if the rest are working, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as a debug tool, that's the other use case. So you have an error and then you have to you use like the a very a very um, uh, deterministic approach of 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 being like removing things and then see if it's working. Um, I would say that you need a real debugging tool. <laughs> like I mean, which one is failing? I mean, you can put like a nice uh, a nice breakpoint and then debug the whole thing. Uh, you you won't be able to to do this in Drupal like anymore. You won't be able to disable a model and just see if the site uh, gets fixed. As I said, um, this happened. It's not my. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, don't kill the messenger. Um, so another thing that is gone, and this may be surprising, this has happened progressly, I mean, like it's been a progress for the last few months, I mean, right, this has been happening for a while, is that we don't have a menu model anymore, but wait before running away in panic. Yeah, don't just run just away, I mean. Um, we have a new menu system. It's not just a model, 
we have a new menu system. And this menu system starts for the, for the roads. So we have the roads there. And you define like the starting point, like the URL or the URI. And you have a subsystem for every other menu component. And we'll see this in a little bit of more detail. But the things that we have in, in Drupal, and we call it a menu, are like the menu items, like the normal menu item that, it, that is in a hierarchy. We have actions, I mean, we have tabs, we have actions, and we have contextual links. That's the, like the typology of things we have. And actions, if someone, because I have to look this up to see what the action was, it's like the, the plus, create new uh, node type, that's an action. Um, and then we have the custom items, uh, those that you just create by interface. Um, and menu is gone, so most of the things are basically part of the core libraries. But w there are two new models, so for each one we kill, we get two new. Um, we have menu UI that uh, takes care of the um, of the interfaces, like the you know, like if you disable views UI, you can't create a view. That's what it is. And menu link content that takes care of, of the custom items. So if you enable that, the user will be able to create new menus, new menu links in the site through the interface. And um, this is um, what a menu is in Drupal 7 as for today. I'm just trying to reason why this happened. Um, and here you see, um, well, we, here you see a number of things. A hook menu that we all love. Um, um, declare like a lot of things. So if you declare a menu, you are actually creating a route. You are actually creating a, a page. But you're also adding a callback with a wildcard and access and uh, where it is and why type, what type it is. Um, so, it, I mean, hook menu is clearly doing too much and that is, that is a big problem. So that's why uh, the menus got um, replaced by this new collection of, of tools. And uh, this works um, as this. So we have the root first. So you first need to create the, the entrance point, like the URL. So we have a routing system um, that you define in YAML files. We'll, uh, we'll see a lot of YAML stuff in this uh, presentation. YAML is a... Um, it's yet another markup language, so it self-defines very well. It's like JSON, but not JSON. Um, so we have routes that map basically the path with a controller. And this controller can be a method in a class, can be um, leveraging, leveraging the entity form system. So if you want an edit form for an entity, you need this and that's it. You have uh, loads of examples, and you'll see if you go to this track, you'll see a lot of uh, these examples uh, these these days. But it also defines uh, permission and access to that route. And you can even put um, regular expressions to say this argument here is only a string, or it can only be a decimal, or any other crazy regular expression you can come up. So this is like the, the entrance point. This is just defining the route, like the path of the page. Which actually, if you think about it, doesn't have anything to do with the actual menu, the navigation menu of the user. So if you actually want that menu as well, you need to define it in another jumble file, <laughs> which are uh, the node, I mean the node, the model name, the links port because we need something and then the type of the menu so you have, we have task we have action we have item we have many of them and um, this is actually what creates the menu that the user sees the navigation thing and custom menu links you can have it as a normal content entity so when a user creates a menu it's actually a new entity 
um, like a node or a taxonomy term or the same user shares shares the same the same thing. So the thing that you need is the root name. So I don't know how many times you've changed an application in uh, in hot mode when the the URLs change. So suddenly the user wants a new URL for something. That's pretty common and has happened to me last week. And you have to basically search and replace everywhere you've used it, right? So with this system, with the new routing system, the, you have a machine name for the root and just one place for defining the URL, which is great. Um, yeah, contextual action tasks and menu links, that's it. Okay, so as I said, um, for every model we killed in Drupal 8, two extra at least appeared. So actually Drupal 8, I mean, I mean that before was a plain lie. It's not wrong at all. It's bigger than ever. And uh, something you could say, that, I mean, all the hooks or many of the hooks are gone now. And we've replaced the hooks by a ton of files. Object, uh, object style thing. And that's probably good uh, long term. It's been a painful process. <laughs> but um, one great thing we have in core in Drupal 8 is migrate. And there are sprints uh, right now, all this week in migrate. So you're in, if you're interested in this, that's a great place to learn. Um, so you know the upgrade, the update PHP um, URL you have in Drupal. 7, 6, 5, and probably uh, earlier than that. That will be based in migrate. The migra migrate as in the country migrate model. Um, because it really, I mean, how many of you have done a client work using the update PHP? And it seems to be very stable. Okay, a few risky hands. I mean, it wasn't really working. Honestly, I mean, if you, as soon as you have something a little more complicated like that the, than the normal use case, like the, the expected use case, you probably just already did migrate workflow, right? You just build a new site, import all the content, and then go. Um, even for from for Drupal to Drupal, and actually the the first thing, one of the first things that got into core with the migrate. Uh, model was the migrate uh, from Drupal 6 to Drupal 8. So there are uh, mm, tools to migrate a Drupal 6 to Drupal 8, more or less, I mean, in a uh, pre beta status as everything else uh, in uh, core right now. And the uh, migrate for Drupal 8, I will show you some code now, um, uses a best practice, like, I mean, it's core now, so it's the quality of the code is a uh, core standard and it's testable and it actually has tests. So you can guarantee that something is working or not. Um, and that's a very, a very uh, powerful tool. So you can, you could potentially pass a um, um, sample of your data to your migration tools and see if it's working or not doing a test. Um, this is uh, how you define uh, migration these days in Drupal core. As I said, this may change slightly or not uh, in the future. So you have a YAML file, that's a surprise. And you have the name of the model, migration, and this is the machine name of it. This um, migrate user roles from Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 because the other big thing with migrate in Drupal 8 is that you can actually migrate also configuration. So you can migrate both content like nodes and configuration like a user role or, or um, taxonomy um, characteristics or, or, or anything, anything that is actually configuration or variables. All the variables have a map it's already. So you can migrate your ma your variables the same way you migrate your content. And that is a good thing. Um, yeah. No? Uh, yeah. 
So, um, can you define the plugin name? We go to that in, in a moment. Um, and you define a serial of a uh, series of transformations. So you have a um, plugin system to um, your sources, meaning you're getting from a database, you're getting for an XML. How's your XML doing? I mean, is it a, a CSV or is it an Excel file? You can have a, a, a plugin for that. You have an object that takes care of that. Then you have a, Processors. So this thing here converts whatever string you have to a machine name <coughs> to make sure that the user roles you are importing are, in, are really a machine name. And this takes care of that the entity name is not duplicated. So you could add processors to your migration that transform your data over the, over the process you're doing. And at the end, somewhere, sorry, I'm looking there look here um, you have destination and that's another plugin so you can have a destination that is an entity that is a variable that is a, and you can override that and um, all of these are pluggable so you can actually extend them you can actually provide your own you can you can modify them and this is the example of the machine name of uh, this is a process plugin for migrate. This is not a migrate talk. It's just to get you like in the in the right in the right uh, path. But when you do a process, what you have is a transform method. <coughs> it gets something and outputs something else, and this is generating a machine name. So it gets the transliteration value. It uh, transforms lowercase. It does a pre replace a um, regular expression to just have the uh, underscore to have a machine name and then just return the, the value. That's it. So if you have um, another transformation, you can just go in this exact same direction. So, wait, plugins? What's that? Um, because I've said it a lot. <laughs> um, a plugin is just. Um, piece of code with a specific purpose. You can say like a, that's a very broad definition. And Drupal 8 has plugins everywhere. The block system is a plugin system. The uh, migration is a plugin system. Uh, Views has an incredibly lot of uh, plugins in there. So um, this is just a way of, a fancy way to say all your code that was in model files should be in more or less that. And um, if you want to know more, I'm going to just run because I'm cheeky like that. I'm just recommending you sessions. Uh, there is a session on the plugin system if you want to know more. It's going to be great with Joe Sindra. Uh, highly recommend it on Thursday. Speaking of plugins, the action system is a plugin base as well. Um, so as I say, how many people did actually use the trigger and action action models in Drupal 7? I mean, you had rules at some point. So it wasn't really, really powerful. So um, actions are now an outdated plugins, and this is one of the other pain points of this presentation. You will see that in a minute. Um, and we have configured actions that doesn't require a user input. And those are configuration entities, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So the action model will be just the interface. I'm actually not sure if the action model is action UI now. Um, that means we have a simplified views bulk operation in core, which means that all your listings in the admin interface will become views. So if you want to provide the user with an extra field in your node listing, you can. You don't have to do anything. Uh, really, really complicated to have that. And that is great, right? It's not great? I mean, it's great. Um, as you have the actions API, you have a conditions API as well, like matching. And the rules um, um, country model will probably be based on this. 
So this is uh, an example of a plugin uh, from the action. This is a action plugin. So you have a configuration <coughs> and you have the form. So for example, to provide a um, user with a new role, that's a very classic Drupal action. I have a user, I want to give it give in a role. So I need a um, UI for that. So the role you're giving him will be exposed in a form here. And then you have a normal validating subject function. But if you want to provide a pre-configured action, like with your installation, that the user doesn't need to actually select anything, it's just an action, that when, um, when this action r runs, I just create this role for the user. I just assign this role to the user. No selection or anything. This is a, a config entity. Um, have you heard before about configuration entities? No? No? No one? Yeah? Um, what? <laughs> um, configuration entities. Um, you know we have content <laughs> entities that are like nodes, taxonomies, users. Those are fillable. Those are the usual entities we are used to work with. We have configuration entities now in Drupal 8, which share the API with uh, the content entities. So you can just create them or delete them. We'll, we'll go back to that. And um, it, uses di it uses a different storage um, in the active config, what it's called, instead of being uh, in tables in the database. Well, actually, they are in tables in the database. But instead of being a normal table, it will be a key value pair normally. Um, you can create these configuration entities just to put in, just by putting a right YAML file in the right place. So you don't need to um, do PHP code to do that. And you can move them around between environments very easily. Um, and not feel double. And you, if you have the temptation of having a configuration entity to add a field to a configuration entity, it's probably not a configuration <laughs> entity. <laughs> it's not for that. So let's look at this example again. This is a configure action, and we create it just with entity create. We don't need any other API. We create the configuration entities by code if we need it with this, with this same API. Otherwise, you just provide the YAML file, and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. Here. So, I have a very important point here, uh, that is, um, while all these other initiatives were on, and these were these are great, don't misunderstand me, but um, a huge thing has happened in the back, like the back of the room, nobody was watching. Um, the whole field system and the whole entity system is changed. Actually, it's, it's been changed twice. <laughs> and um, we are all talking about Symfony and everything related this week. But the C of CMS is for content, and that's where the content is. That's the really important part. And uh, a lot of things have, have happened. And um, one of the big things that has happened, uh, besides having a date field, from the moment you install, because you know you use dates, right? Uh, email, link, uh, uh, fields. There are simplified ports, simplified ports of these uh, of these uh, models. So when you install the uh, telephone field, you don't get all the countries in the world in a dropdown. Okay, you just get a plain text field. So it's a simplified version. But the great thing is the entity reference. So there is no more discussion about how you relate entities between each other. In Drupal 8, you use entity reference. It's flexible, it's extendable, it's plugin-based again. So if you want to go nuts with it, you can just provide plugin for it. And you don't need to do any, any, any hacking. And this, is, this one is great. So I don't know if you have the necessity of having a comment in something that wasn't a node. Yeah? 
Sounds familiar to some? Okay, I know I did. Um, comment is now a field. So you can add comments to anything, meaning that you can add comments to comments. <coughs> well, you know, forums. And um, you can have several comment fields for every, every entity type. And you can reuse exi existing fields. So everything that is good about fields, you have it in comments, which is which is a great thing. Now. And there will be, if there is not already, a migration path for upgrading your old comments to the new system, which is uh, a good thing to have. This is a, a slide I totally stole from the field API session. Um, this is where field API meets the um, configuration manage management initiative. So, um, all the, how many of you have struggled with features at some point? Um, you know about the field config thing and the, and the uh, bundle settings, right? The bundle settings is one of my nightmares every um, night. Um, those are gone. So, fields and their definitions are YAML files, they are configuration entities, so you can deploy them in environments. That's good. They are they're supposed to be human readable. I mean, as, I mean, it's a YAML file, it's a text file, so it's it's better than a bunch of PHP in a feature file. And can be deployed, as I said. And um, in Drupal 7, when you delete a field you got a table called field deleted and a number. Right. It's familiar with that? And, and um, when you try to create a field that it was named the same way that the other, you couldn't. All you could, all you could hope for is to run around and finger cross it will the field go away, which sometimes didn't happen. Um, now the delete fields are kept in a state in a state um, variables on a state um, um, storage. State is a new storage for uh, storing key value pairs um, in Drupal 8. So they are not deployed. So it's like um, you will store there the last time the Chrome was run. And that's not something that you're interested in moving in between environments. So the delete fields are going to be stored there and you will be good to go. That's a great addition. Um, what we used to call fields is now called field storage. It's been named many times over the past months. And you define a field like this. I mean, you normally wouldn't create this yourself. You'll probably create the field by interface and then export this to a YAML file. That would be like the normal workflow. Um, and you have uh, the entity type, you have a lot of, um, a lot of um, things here. And the name of the, of the YAML file to put in your model will be like a field storage. Entity type, because fields are bound to an entity type. <coughs> and uh, the name of the field. And what we used to call instance is now called field. Um, and you will end up with something like field, field, user, 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 picture. Okay, so is this the entity type, this is the field, this is the field entity type, this is the entity type, this is the bundle, and this is the number, num name of the field. Okay, so uh, don't put too many users there. And then you relate them with the with bundle, with their entity type, and you can have dependencies there. Um, but just yesterday, okay, or maybe maybe it was uh, two days ago. Um, yeah, field name is not field name anymore; is name. Okay, so these things change a lot still. Uh, and there's a Drupal 8 CMI session uh, with Matt Cheney, Matt Cheney and Dave Strauss on Wednesday you want to know more about CMI because that's a little out of scope. And um, I think this slide, I've, I've, been, I've changed it 13 times. 
not, I'm not exactly there. So if you want to create a field, there are configuration entities. So you can use entity create for that. So you can entity create a field storage config or a node with this name, with this type. <coughs> and then you can create the field config is the uh, instance. So you can create the instance for this. Actually, this should be name. Sorry about that. Entity type and bundle. <coughs> that's how you would create a field. You can put tons of settings there, but that's the basic thing to create a field in Drupal 8 by PHP. You can put the YAML file and it will and import the configuration instead. And you can just change things like this. You can change the field config, change the cardinality, and then call save like it as if it were another entity, which it is. And then you have a limited set of hooks that have survived the hook destruction. Uh, some of them are, are still there, so you can you can hook there if you if you really want. Uh, just this is just the last note. Um, widgets, formatters, and field types are now pl are now plugins as well. So we'll see we'll see how do we define those. So. It's very, I mean, this is a very, this is something I struggle with Drupal 7 for a lot of time, that if you want a formatter for a field that is similar to another formatter that you already have, but not quite, you have to just duplicate the whole thing. Well, now these are plugins, so you have inheritance, and you can just overwrite just the parts that you're interested in. And if the other thing changes, you just carry on the change. And this is the thing, annotated plugins. What's that? <laughs> okay, that's the other pain point of this. Um, this is not a comment. This is the PHP way of supporting annotations inside comments. So you have the field widget, you put an ID, the label, and then the field types. This, this piece up here is what replaces hooks um, like hook field info or hook field widget info in this case. Um, same goes with, um, well, this is the implementation of the widget. So for a widget, you have the setting form, the form element, you have an error, error element, and my favorite name of function of Drupal 8, massage form values, which is like a pre validation thing. You massage the data and then it comes. Formatters are the same thing. You have a settings form, you have the summary for the listing, you have a view, you have a preview, a prepare view, sorry. And uh, sorry. And the definition of both widgets, formatters, and field types is similar to this one, to the annotations thing. So you put the plugin file in the right place with the right annotation, and you will get a field type, a new field type. Uh, be careful with this. Because if you put, um, if you screw with this, like you put a comma, um, you put a comma where it shouldn't, or you don't put a comma where it sh where you should, like a formatting thing, you will get a incredible, incredibly awful doctrine error in your page, which is very leaves you very clueless. So if you get that, it's just probably one annotation that is not properly formatted. Wait, just come out there. and. Totally recommended because the field system may be rewritten in these two days while we wait. Uh, there is a session of the field API and the entity field API by the guys that made it. Um, and that's it. Oh, yeah, and this is like a thank slide um, because without these guys, um, the undercover initiatives or all these things that happen that were really necessary and really, really useful. Um, these are many more are the responsible, and most of them are here. So say thanks or something, if you see them. Um, oh, and final, final notice, there is, there are sprints the whole week, but on Friday there is a very dedicated sprint on all these things and more. So uh, find um, information there if you, if you are interested. And that's it. Thank you.
Um, please, 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 please rate the session. Uh, we have two ways to rate any session. Uh, one is in the if you go to slash schedule in the DrupalCon website, but we also are trying to do ratings in joined in. So if you go to bit.ly rate d8 undercover, I will I will much appreciate that. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions. Yeah, you have any question? Just there's a mic there. Otherwise, I'm I'll be sticking around for a while. So thank you for coming.